Alright, we're going to finish up uh, Unit 10 with a section on uh, three-dimensional shapes called solid. So when you hear the term solid in uh, pre-algebra, think three dimensions, think 3D. We're going to look at surface areas and we're going to look at volumes, but first we're going to look at the different types of solids that we're going to be interested in. A solid is a three-dimensional figure that encloses part of space. The polygons that form the sides of the solid are called the faces. Kind of an unusual name. My first example looks like a rectangular box. It's called a prism. This is just one kind of prism. A prism is a solid formed by polygons. I have to have two congruent bases that lie in parallel planes. So like maybe the top and the bottom here of this rectangular box shape here. And all the other faces, the front, the back, the right, the left, those are all going to be rectangles. It doesn't have to be a rectangular prism like this. It could be a prism, and I'm not as good as drawing these here, but it could be a prism where you have maybe triangles. Oops, let's bring that down here, let's bring that down here a little bit further, and we'll bring that down here like this, and we'll go like this, and we'll go like this, and we'll go like this. And that would be a triangular prism. You may have seen glass triangular prisms, and the sun shines through and it forms the spectrum of colors. Okay, those are prisms. Pyramid, well, just think of the Luxor. Those of you that uh, have ever been to the Luxor know exactly the shape I'm talking about. It's a solid form by polygons. The base can be any polygon. The base in this case is supposed to be a square there, but I didn't draw it very well. But the other faces all have to be triangles. This does not have to be a square. This base could be a triangle or a pentagon or a hexagon or any other kind of polygon you want. But all the other faces meet up at this point up here and all those faces are formed, uh, they're all triangles. A cylinder, kind of like a tin can, is a solid form with two congruent circular bases, the top and the bottom, that lie in parallel planes. So this is parallel to this, and as you can see, the part that connects them that goes around is not a polygon, it's a round shape like that, but that's the way that the cylinder is formed. And uh, a cone, which is, looks kind of like a part of a cylinder, is a solid form with one circular base here. And it's kind of like, uh, like an ice cream cone turned upside down, or if you took one of those uh, white paper uh, conical shaped uh, cups that they use for uh, um, snow cones and such, and kind of flipped it over, but a solid, it would have a solid base. And you get the idea of a cone. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you some formulas that you can use to find the surface area and the volume. Now the volume is three dimensions. It's the space inside. But the surface area would be the area of each one of the faces. The top, the bottom bases, and all four sides. Each one. Finding the area of each one of these shapes. And the base in the back. That's the surface area. It's kind of like if you had to wrap this gift up, how much wrapping paper would you need to cover the whole thing? And that's a two-dimensional idea. Surface area, two-dimensional, volume, three-dimensional. So we'll, we'll come up with some formulas here. Okay, I'm going to do some stuff with surface area. I did not mention one particular solid, which you guys will see later on in geometry a lot more, and that's a sphere. It's kind of like a three-dimensional circle, like a basketball. There are formulas for finding the surface area and for finding the volume, but I'm going to leave that to the geometry teacher to have some fun with when you get to, or when you get to his or her class. All right, we're going to look at the surface area of the solids. We're going to do a couple of prisms, and then I'll show you the surface area formula here in just a second of a cylinder. It's uh, the surface area, as for surface area, is two times the base. Now, that's the area of the base, plus the perimeter times the height. So if I do the example here to the right, I'm going to count this right up here, this guy right up here. I'm going to count him as my base. All right, that would mean then that this right here would be my height. So the area of a base, well this is a rectangle that's 24 long, 8 wide. The area of the base would be 24 times 8, which is 192. And this is going to be, this area right here, this is going to be in square feet. But that's not my whole problem. I'm going to take double that because I have a top and a bottom that are exactly the same. And then the perimeter. The perimeter of my base 
This is 24 this way, 8 this way, so this is 8 over here and 24 over here. If you add that all the way around, 24 plus 8 plus 24 plus 8, that would be 48 and 16, 50, 64. So the perimeter is 64 feet. And of course the height, I've already mentioned, that's going to be this distance right here. The height is going to be 4 feet because I have the top and the bottom as my bases. So the surface area is equal to 2 times 192 plus the perimeter, which is 64, times the height, which is 4. So 2 times 192, that's 384, and 64 times 4 is 256, and if I add those together, that's 0 carry a 1, that's a 4 carry a 1, that's 640, and this is going to be square feet. That's going to be in square feet. And that's my surface area. Now this guy over here is a little trickier because in this case the, the bases are these triangles. Alright, so I have to find the area of the base. The area of the base would be for a triangle here is going to be one half times the base times the height which is 24 half of 24 is 12. So B is equal to 12 my perimeter, I have to add up all the sides, and I don't know all the sides. All I have here is that I have a right triangle uh, with the height drawn in, and that bisects this side, so that means this is 3 and this is 3. I have a 3, 4, using the Pythagorean theorem, a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So the perimeter would be 6 plus 5 plus 5. So the perimeter would be 16 meters. And of course the height here is given to be 4. So my surface area would be the uh, 2 times the area of the base, so 2 times 12, plus the perimeter 16 times the height 4. That's 24 plus 64. That looks like 88, and this would be in square meters. It's a little bit more difficult, I believe, that when uh, the prism you're trying to find the surface area of is not a rectangular prism. You know, sometimes have extra steps. Now, for a cylinder, a cylinder is like finding the surface area of the sleeve and the two ends. That's the two ends, that's the sleeve there. That's this distance around. Like if you cut off the top and the bottom of a tin can, cut down the side and flat it out, you'll get a rectangle. So in this case, I'm going to use this formula. I'm going to plug in this information, this in for R, this in for H, and 3.14 in for pi. And I get the surface area to be 2 times 3.14 times my radius 4, which is 4 squared, plus 2 times uh, 3.14 again, times my radius, which is 4, times my height, which is 10. Well, I'm not messing around with this one. I am definitely grabbing my calculator, if I can find it. Oh. Here it is, and I'm going to do this one using my calculator so that I don't mess up. 2 times 3.14 times 4 squared, which is 16. And then I'm going to add to that 2 times 3.14 times 4 times 10, which is 40. And I'm going to get 351.68. I'm going to round to the nearest amount, the nearest square foot in this case, so I'm going to get 352, uh, this is an approximate square feet here in area. Now the volume, now that's three dimensions again, that's the space inside. The volume of a solid can be found by taking the area of the base times the height. And I have a triangular prism over there. This is for the prism here, for the, the solid of a prism. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this area right here. Now notice it's a triangle, one half times base times height here. So the area of the base would be one half times six times eight. Forty-eight half of that's twenty-four square centimeters. My height is ten. So the volume is going to be twenty-four times ten or two hundred forty cubic centimeters because we're doing volume now. That's our first volume problem. I'm going to do one or two more and I think we just about have this one under control. Okay, we'll finish this off with one more example. This one is the volume of a cylinder. Now it's still the area of the base times the height, it's just that the base is a circle, and we find the area of the circle by doing pi r squared. 
And in this case, my radius is 5. My height, the distance between the two bases, is 15. This is in feet. So the volume would be pi 3.14 times my radius, which is 5 squared, times my height, which is 15. So again, I've got to grab my calculator, which I'm keeping closer and closer to me each time. And I multiply 3.14 times 25, that's 5 squared, times 15, and I get 1,000. 177.5, I'm going to round up, and this would be in cubic feet. Okay, this is just enough to get you started with volumes and surface areas, and hopefully you'll understand this uh, better and better as you remember to practice, practice, practice.